Blog Talk Radio. Good morning, everyone. This is Johnny Tan, author of From My Mama's Kitchen, Food for the Soul, Recipes for Living. Welcome to my weekly From My Mama's Kitchen talk radio show. My guest for this morning is Kelly McNally Senegal. She is the founder of Women for One. It is a movement that promotes authenticity and inspiration for women throughout the world. In just the second year of existence, her organization has reached over 4 million people in 50 countries. Kelly and I will be discussing how her organization helped to inspire women to express themselves and embrace personal empowerment. Good morning, Kelly. Welcome to From My Mama's Kitchen Talk Radio. How are you doing this morning? I'm wonderful. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you for joining me from Seattle, Washington. That's right. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> early up there, so I do appreciate you getting up early this morning. Women for One organization is a very interesting community. I'm excited to learn more about what you ladies do and how we can help you get your message out. So congratulations. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm very excited to speak with you. Wonderful. Let us start by getting to know you a little better. Please give us a quick walk through your life from childhood to the present moment. Well, I was born in Pennsylvania uh, for almost 45 years ago. And I lived in Pennsylvania until I was 11, and something unique about me was that I went to 17 schools, K through 12. So I developed a, a very good um, tool to connect with different types of people and adapt to situations with that. Um, and then I moved to North Carolina with my mom and uh, went to college there and then moved around um, and after I went to NC State, North Carolina State University. Moved around after that and uh, lived in India for a while with a guru, which I learned a lot from. Um, moved back to New York and met my first husband at my best friend's wedding and then moved mm-hmm. to Canada. And then uh, this is right around I was 23 and mm-hmm. I worked in the nonprofit youth sector. Um, I actually have done that for I did that for about 20 years um, in developing new nonprofits for youth um, in the U.S. and Canada. Um, and then we decided to move out to Seattle after we had our first child, who I have to say today is 18 years old today. I'm really excited and proud of him. Uh, I can't believe I have an adult child right now. Um, so we celebrated this morning. <laughs> um, and then we had our two other children um, in Seattle, where I worked in nonprofit as a consultant um, for youth and community organizations. And so that brings me up to about when I was 30. And when... Um, in about 32, after I'd had my last child, um, I really did some soul searching, and my husband and I decided to get a divorce. So I went through a really intense period of my life where I got a divorce. I was a single mom. Um, I went back to work and supported my children, um, and did a lot of soul searching and, and personal growth about who I am and who the people I wanted to surround myself with were. Um, for, after that, one of my dearest friends um, died of, of cancer, and I went through that with her. I, I sat there while she left her body, and that was another huge personal growth experience for me where I just took a look at what is important in life to me. And then I met my current husband and a uh, love of my life, um, and we blended a family of six children, ages 12 and 19 right now. So that mm-hmm. was a huge, huge um, blending of families <laughs> and a very exciting growth opportunity for me. And so that brings us to um, about a couple of years ago where I decided to start Women for One in the movement. Very interesting. So mm-hmm. when did you realize you are a caring individual? Um, you know, I... I I was thinking about that, and I would say my earliest memory is when I realized I I believe mm-hmm. caring, caring the, the term caring individual is about really understanding that we're all interconnected in this world and universe. Because mm-hmm. then you know other people's pain is yours, mm-hmm. and so from that 
I, my earliest memory, I was three years old. I'm sitting under this huge oak tree in Pennsylvania. And those little windmill things were flying down off of it. I don't know if you've ever seen those. And I remember looking up at the age of three, and my heart was expanding with love for everything around me. And mm-hmm. I, I have to say, that is when I, you know, when, I, when you ask that question, that's the first thing that came to my mind is we're all interconnected. And yeah. the only way we can become caring individuals is if we can care for ourselves and fill our own heart. Very interesting. You have traveled mm-hmm. to India, and, of course, you have been to 17 different schools, if I recall mm-hmm. correctly. Yes. Who right. are the individuals that have truly influenced your very being? Hmm. Well, I would say, first and foremost, my three children. Mm-hmm. They have it influenced me, you know, beyond words. It just makes me tear up thinking of being a mother. And as you yeah. know, with your nine nine women that influenced you, um, my three children have helped me to grow and learn about love, which I think is the most important thing in this world, more than anything. Mm-hmm. But I would say, on a grander level, um, my friends have become, I, I would Born an only child, I do have a brother and a sister that are much younger than me now, but I was an only child for 23 years. So mm-hmm. when when I think of my friends, they are my sisters. I created this sisterhood um, mm-hmm. growing up, going to these schools. So my dear, dear friends, um, I have one dearest friend who has stuck by me through my whole life and is deeper, I think, than most sisters are as a mm-hmm. friendship. So I would mm-hmm. say her. So really the people that are close to me. Yeah. But I would also say if I had to pick someone in the whole world, past, present, or future, that's somewhat of a he is a huge celebrity, it would be Paolo Coelho. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've read every one of his books, and I'm not a particularly starstruck person, but I think mm-hmm. if I ever met Paolo, because he's the author of The Alchemist, um, mm-hmm. I, I I was deeply moved into kind of my spiritual growth by his books. Um, Very interesting. You know, yeah. Wonderful. Why did you go to India? I went to India because um, I just graduated college, and mm-hmm. I had gotten my dad died when I was seventeen, mm-hmm. and when he died, I I actually experienced him dying. I I didn't know he was going to die, but I, I felt him kind of come through me to say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really the first time. I wasn't raised in any traditional religious background. So it was really the first time I knew there was something more, and I was really interested in it, and it kind of awakened It awakened me. So mm-hmm. from that, I uh, my mom was doing meditation and had met a, a guru in the U.S. And so I kind of just started dabbling in it and trying to meditate, figuring out what that was, asking what the meaning of life was. So after um, after college, I decided to, since a lot of people at that time, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. have children, it would be a great time, I decided to do an inter- internship in Ganesh Puri, um, India. And I stayed there for around a year, and then I moved back to New York as well, um, and lived in the ashram there for another year. Wow. So mm-hmm. you really have your spiritual awakening at a very young age. I did. I did. It was, you know, I find that the sometimes the the really intense moments of life give you the most growth. I mean, I've experienced that as as I think a lot of us believe. That's fantastic. What events in your life led you to a personal leadership revelation, though? Because you were involved in a lots of organization by, by you initiate things. So when did that happen? What events in your life sort of pushed you? to that level? Well, like I just said, I think all hardships and challenges led me to a place of learning and strength mm-hmm. um, in my life. But I, I would say um, we have to assimilate those hardships and learnings mm-hmm. into our body and into our soul and really understand why they've happened to move us into a place of personal leadership. And I would say uh, how I define personal leadership is really understanding actions, why you're doing certain things, bringing them up from the subconscious to the conscious mind and into the heart and understanding understanding yourself so you can take effective action in your life and not be a victim of your own circumstances. So with that said, I would say 
yes, I went through a really difficult time when, you know, I got divorced and then my dear, you know, my dear friend passed away. Um, and after that, I still needed time to assimilate all of those struggles and lessons and, and really reflect back on my life to create a strong foundation so I could understand what my own personal leadership would be. And that mm-hmm. was just a couple of years ago when I decided to start Women for One. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Why did mm-hmm. you decide to start Women for One? Well, it's it's really a, a great story. Um, I just uh, had a great conversation with a woman named Tosha Silver, and mm-hmm. she wrote a book called Outrageous Openness, Letting the Divine Take the Lead. Mm-hmm. And I would say, truly, Women for One came from the divine. And divine to me, whatever you want to define God as, um, you know, supreme consciousness, my intuition, my own know, inner knowing, I kept getting this this nudge inside myself um, that I wanted to do more and that I was at a place in my life. We had just assimil- uh, created uh, our family of eight and blended mm-hmm. the family, which took a couple of years to get really grounded in that. Um, I was feeling really good. I had some personal resources and time where I could actually do whatever I want. I felt like the world was my oyster, and I thought, well, what is it that I want to do? And the first thing I heard when I meditated was, I want to write. I really want to write. But there was this other part of me that I wanted to use the skill sets to give back to the world, my skill sets. And I knew one of my strongest skill sets was connecting people and creating resources for them. But I had done that in the past by... um, Helping other organizations. Uh, my, my dear friend has an organization that I help with still. I was on a lot of boards, and I would support them, like in the nonprofit sector. It was right. my job, and it was my talent. But this time, I really had to do some soul searching to, to understand what my passion is. So I sat down, and I meditated and said, okay, Divine, I want to write. I'm good at connecting people. What do I do? I surrender. And I think that's a really important place to really surrender and come from that that place of listening and getting quiet and still so you can hear what your passion is. And I heard the words, women for one. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm going to surrender. <laughs> when I hear that voice every single time, women for one, I'm going to surrender. And I go on the computer and I look up the URL and I get it. I got the mm-hmm. URL. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew it was about women. I heard the word global, and I heard the word movement. Mm -hmm. So I started from there, and I feel like I'm setting my intent to be kind of a conduit. I am not women for one. I am the conduit which women for one comes through me to channel out to inspire others in the world. So that's really how I started it. It Mm -hmm. was truly, you know, following my intuition and listening very interesting. What is its vision and mission? So now you've got the organization going. What would you like to get accomplished? Well, um, I'd like to actually just explain to you kind of how it evolved because mm-hmm. it's still mm-hmm. evolving to this day. But mm-hmm. Women for One is a global movement of authenticity and inspiration for women of all ages and backgrounds all over the world. So that's pretty, that's pretty general, and I know right. that. And the reason I made I kept it general from the beginning was because I wanted to be that conduit. I wanted the community to decide what that is. And it's been really cool to kind of <laughs> see it unfold. It's like a mm-hmm. mystery, right? It's like, well, what's going to happen today? I had, I really had no agenda. I had a general intent, like setting that container. I didn't have an agenda of, you know, either <sighs> reaching this many people or being famous or speaking in front of people or any of that. Mm-hmm. I had no agenda. I still don't. It's interesting. And it's interesting to watch it unfold. So what it's evolved from from the beginning, where the beginning was about um, highlighting nonprofit causes, because that's, that mm-hmm. was my talent, um, that women were doing. Mm-hmm. And then I guess about a year and a half ago, I heard again as I sat down, you need to allow women to share their stories become truth tellers. And so I shifted the, pers- the perspective of Women for One into a place where women could come to our website mm-hmm. and share their stories and, and be- 
really learned what it is to be authentic. And so what happened was women started just, like, writing about everything that's going on in their lives. But the, 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 the catch there was we didn't want women sitting in their victimhood. We wanted them to be able to release their stories. And mm-hmm. release their stories, meaning, meaning that they share their stories, then they, they move into a place of understanding why they're telling themselves these stories. And with mm-hmm. that, they can share their wisdom and resources with all the other women that are reading these stories. Mm-hmm. But I would say the most important thing after they've shared their stories authentically, inspired others, the, the third piece of Women for One that I think is the most important is manifestation, creating a new vision for themselves from these stories. So what did they learn? How have they changed? And sharing that with all the women so that women can gain wisdom from that knowledge and that the women that are sharing can kind of release those stories into the universe and move mm-hmm. forward with mm-hmm. their lives. Our mission really is to have women share their stories. Mm-hmm. And I also interview other women and, and men that have really created a new vision for their lives and released kind of those subconscious stories, the past that they told themselves about themselves, and they've moved into the new vision of what they want and manifestation in their lives and share how they did that. Mm-hmm. And my vision, I would say, is um, for all women throughout the world to feel, past, present, and future, everyone, to feel that interconnected thread, that that intangible thread that all of us have inside ourselves, that we're all we're all sharing the same struggles and the sa- same beauty and the same earth. It's it, and to have everybody be able to understand that that place inside themselves that is just like everyone else. What I'm looking at is basically your organization created a gigantic whiteboard for people to express themselves. In this case, of course, your main target are women throughout the world. And a lot of times it's a process of transference because when you write something that is on your mind right now, whether it is celebrating your achievements or in most cases, in some ways, expressing your frustration, you have gone through the process of transference. And then in the course of having it on the whiteboard, someone else may come in and read that and it itself may inspire others to do likewise. That's that's correct. Absolutely. And yes, and what's so interesting is that I have very interesting demographics of women mm-hmm. sharing their stories. I've got mm-hmm. 18 to 24 year olds mm-hmm. in the Middle East, which is half of my following. And then I've got the Western world, I would, I would call it, you know, the large following yeah. in Europe, uh, Australia, yeah. and the U.S., ages yeah. 40 to 55. Mm-hmm. And there's the same struggles. I mean, yes, there's internal oppression that we do in the Western world, and there's external yeah. oppression that they're suffering. But generally, it's it, it's the same struggle. And mm-hmm. to watch that um, and for it, to create that bond with all women and that understanding for people all over the world to know that they're not alone and mm-hmm. that they're more alike than different. Is this the same application that you apply to yourself in terms of releasing the old you to become the new you? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's so interesting. People will say, so what made you do this or who are you? And I was like, I'm a mom. <laughs> With, I'm a wife. I've been divorced. I've, I'm a sexual abuse survivor. And, and, you know, I don't like even use the word survivor. It's, it's part of my past. Mm-hmm. I am, I've suffered, suffered and I've enjoyed and I've celebrated life just like, you know, my, I have a liaison, um, a team member from Egypt. Mm-hmm. Uh, this young woman, she's 23, she's a PhD student in Cairo, uh, in feminine, feminism right now mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we'll talk and it's like you know we're dear friends long lost friends because we're all just walking our walk and trying to do the best we can very interesting were there some challenges that you face in putting the women for one community together <laughs> no <laughs> <It's> been, <laughs> I, I, you know simply said absolutely not the only challenge I've ever had was when I got in my own way. Mm-hmm. And by that I mean 
I started having an agenda for what I wanted to happen. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you know, I feel like if I could apply what I'm doing with Learn for One to every other aspect of my life, which would be parenting and my relationship with my husband and all my friendships, um, which is following that voice inside myself that says what to do, mm-hmm. I, would, I would have a lot more peace in my life. So I'm practicing with Women for One because mm-hmm. I wake up every morning and I'm passionate about what I do. I, mean, I, I remember going to a seminar that Oprah gave uh, two months ago, and she's talking mm-hmm. about finding your passion and how when you do, you have you get so much energy. And I remember thinking, gosh, I didn't used to feel that way. Now, I mean, my even my husband's probably like, you know, I'm thinking about it, I'm talking <laughs> about it. I'm so excited about what I'm doing every single day of my life. So, mm-hmm. no, it hasn't been that challenging at all. That sounds wonderful. And, again, you had mentioned earlier about being divinely spiritually guided along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Very interesting. I, I mean and every um every mentor of mine, which I've had mm-hmm. many, that I've self adopted <laughs> or that has adopted <laughs> me, has taught me that. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, hitting my mid forties I'm finally I'm surrendering to that that it's that it's truth. It really is mm-hmm. when you when you when you let the divine take the lead. It's a beautiful thing. Well, we go through the process of when we were a child, we don't know anything at all. And, of course, we've been taught along the way by our parents and, and whatnot and so forth. Somewhere along the line, when we hit puberty, we get an instant enlightenment. We know it all. <laughs> and then that <laughs> enlightenment somehow deems down over the years. And finally, when we hit somewhere between 30, 40, or 50, we realize that we don't know squat. <laughs> I'm really getting there. It's very humbling, but it's a beautiful place to be where <laughs> I was talking to my best friend yesterday, and I was saying, mm-hmm. you know, I just remember when we used to get up and speak in front of people, and we'd just get in our own way and try to get it right, mm-hmm. and now we're both in this place of, you know what, we're just going to surrender and let it come through us, because right. it makes you more human when you're when you're not perfect. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Very true. Very true. You guys have a wonderful guiding principle. Actually, there are seven guiding principles for Women for One. Please share with us what they are and how do they work. Well, um, my team and I, which we have we have a lot of great people on the team that have joined Women for One, um, I felt like with us internally, we had to mirror what we really wanted the women that were coming to us to be about inside as as our internal workings in 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 what we were doing mm-hmm. with women for one. So we brainstormed these uh, seven or eight principles, and we were so excited about them that we decided to post them on our website as our guiding principles for all of women for one. Mm-hmm. And it was it was interesting how it evolved internally first. Like this is how we are going to interact. This is how we are going to function as a team. Um, and the first one, obviously, um, is authenticity, because I ask everybody that I speak with, what is your definition of authenticity? I'm constantly searching for it in my life. And how I define that is, is really being, being real and mm-hmm. looking at yourself honestly and sharing as much of yourself as you can in the present moment with those you love and who you share life with. And also, I think even more importantly, is taking responsibility for everything that goes on in your life. And your relationships and, and your journey and, and owning that you created it on some level mm-hmm. and moving out of that victimhood place. Um, the next one is transparency, which for me is being real and true and as open as we, we possibly can with one another. There's a lot of times um, somebody will come up and especially with women, they don't want to hurt each other's feelings. Mm-hmm. And I've, I'm learning as I get older, you know, <laughs> transparency sometimes I mean, Paulo Coelho talks about it. It's better to tell the truth and hurt someone's feelings than to lie to make them smile. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you have to honor the strength in someone else, someone else to speak your truth, like mm-hmm. they can handle it. Mm-hmm. And being transparent is extremely important to me because if, if we can't be transparent with one another in our team, what are we putting out there to the world and asking them to be transparent with us? The next one is ex- expansion. Um, and expansion really is, you know, I heard this was global from day one, 
mm-hmm. and really having having no fear in this global arena, fear of differences, and really staying away from fear-based people and organizations, mm-hmm. not not partnering with them, because I feel like when when you get involved with that, it, it becomes part of you, and you've, you've mm-hmm. condoned it. And I, I really want to rise above, because I do believe the opposite of love is fear. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I really want to stay into love. Respect, obviously, is extremely important to honor people, all people, places, and things. Um, look at all things as they're alive and respect that they're a part of you. Because as I, as I said when I was three, we are all one. And mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. that, that place of learning to be a caring individual. The feminine principle is the next one, and that is really moving into that feminine soft power. And I know it really has become a movement, as you spoke about to me off the call um, Mm -hmm. and in the questions. Uh, It's really moved into this uh, into this greater movement of women all over the world. That you know, it's been a masculine society. Mm-hmm. Um, in our recent past, and now we're moving into this really powerful feminine. And feminine to me is staying, when, you, when you're doing things, staying in it with soul and ease in a soft, nurturing way, mm-hmm. and always being kind and caring, and, and really coming into that deep, quiet power within each of us. And even for men, checking in with our intuition. I think it's extremely important in our world right now to, to look at the feminine and see the difference from our masculine go, 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 do, 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 conquer. And I'm not saying that the masculine should not be honored as well. I just think there's an imbalance. And I think that's why there's so many women's movements rising up right now to create mm-hmm. more of a balance. And then efficiency, obviously, these were our guiding principles for our office and mm-hmm. for our team. We really want to use our time wisely. And, and that can be translated as well, like, you know, who are you holding company with? Who are you? What are you spending time speaking and, and, and thinking about? Um, and what are you reading? What are you putting in your mind and your soul every day, really having some awareness around that? Mm-hmm. And then clarity is the last one, which I think we're all striving for clarity in our life, whether we have a question that we're asking ourselves, where we're trying to find peace, joy, and really that, that's all that this comes down to is, finding peace in our lives and getting clarity about what we have and then Mm -hmm. sharing that with others and what we understand. So those are our principles. Fantastic. Those are good Mm -hmm. guidelines as well as for everyone else who comes to your website and if they have any concept of wanting how do I move from point A to point B, I think those seven principles will guide them quite beautifully in achieving that. Yes. Yes, and they kind of just came to all of us as well, collectively as a group. So Mm -hmm. I believe that it was intuited as well. Wonderful. What types of issues are discussed and addressed in the community? Well, it's interesting you ask that because we're getting ready to launch our category page. We've decided Mm -hmm. because we've gotten so many stories and so many issues that we wanted women to be able to more easily access them. So we're launching that in the next week or so where we've categorized these stories into subject areas. And some of them are wellness. Women talk about how they've gotten really sick and come back and how it's affected their soul, their emotions, and their physical body and how they kind of rose up out of that. Um, Another issue and... um, would be around uh, violence against women. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that happening in the Middle East, as you know, the oppression, the external oppression. And women are sharing. They're rising up and sharing their stories, and it's so courageous and brave of them because of what would happen to them. And we we actually take anonymous stories as well because of that. Um, We don't publish their names. But just Mm -hmm. to hear what's happening in the Middle East and in our country, Right now, whether it be about child trafficking, women being abused, mm-hmm. um, domestic violence, it's, it's mind-blowing that in this century we still have all that going on. And, I, you know, my intent is to really shed the light for people that are living in their communities and not knowing that this is still happening or ignorant about it, just mm-hmm. to have them mm-hmm. understand and send their love and light to the, these places that, and, and 
and understand that women are struggling all over the world with this. Other subjects we have are when women talk about parenting and releasing their children to college. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm doing that this year, so I'm going to be writing about that. Um, <laughs> and divorce. Divorce is yeah. a big one as well. Um, eating issues. I mean, it, it runs the gamut. It's everything. And some of them are just tr- simply inspirational. Like, I had this place in my life, and I released my victimhood, and now I am, you know, tapped on my own ship, and I'm moving forward. And those are kind of really cool to read because then you get very excited and inspired very quickly. You know, I would say, there's, you know, if you go to our website, you can see the different stories, and in a week or so we will have the categories up, which is very helpful. Um, the other thing I, I do is I interview these powerful men and women like I've talked about, um, and those are fascinating to read because they really are not just interviews. They're authentic conversations between me and people like Dr. Christian Northup. Um, Elizabeth Lesser from Omega Institute, was, she wrote a book called Broken Open, which is about people sharing their stories and releasing them. So it was a perfectly congruent with what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just recently interviewed Mastin Kipp, who was just on Oprah and was – is being touted as kind of one of the new spiritual leaders of the world for the younger generation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I also just interviewed Congressman Tim Ryan, which was fascinating to listen to him speak about, a, you know, actually a U.S. congressman that wrote a book called The Mindful Nation about teaching children mindfulness and meditation in in the classrooms, in public education. I was just so <laughs> kind of reinvigorated mm-hmm. with my political belief system to hear <laughs> a politician taking a step out of the norm and really showing the benefits and demonstrating the benefits of mindfulness and awareness for children. So Very we have exciting stuff happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. When someone finds your organization, how does your organization help empower women? Well, I would say there's several ways. Um we have many different resources on our site, and it's evolving as the women tell us what they want. As I've said, I'm really allowing for it, for it to unfold. But um, one way is they, they share their stories and they release them and really move into a new place of not – we beat ourselves up so much about having these stories and thinking we're the only ones that have been victimized or have had issues in our lives. So when you release it, I really do believe there's this – place, I've been told this by many people that have released their stories and also inside myself when I first started writing about my personal struggles and my Mm -hmm. wisdom that I've learned and gained, there's a place in you that that becomes free because you're not hiding anymore. I think that there's a lot of women all over the world that are trying to live up to this idealized image of who they should be. And in my 20s and 30s, I know I did it. Like, I had to be the perfect mom and the perfect wife and the perfect friend and have the perfect house. And and then I was like, wait a minute, I'm not happy. What, what am I doing? <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, what is going to bring me happiness, joy, and peace in my life? Well, by telling those stories, I'm saying, hey, you're not alone. And this is me, and I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. And none of us are perfect. And we can all support one another. So that, that's one way. Another way is that we have an incredible book list of, you know, if, if you want to go deeper and, and read more life-changing books to grow and change, we do have a book list that's categorized on our site. And then we also have just, if you just want a, a daily dose of inspiration, we have it on social media, but we also have a quote page where women can just Click on like I need I need a quote today just to get me through the day and to put it into my soul. We have a quote page where you just go on and you can look up a person or you can just click on our our home page and they have beautiful pictures with quotes. So that's like that's our site. Mm-hmm. What what um, another thing that women can get from us is um, they can we're going to be doing online seminars in the future and having I mean talks about having conferences uh, where wonderful, wonderfully powerful women come together. And it's not a conference where there's this, hi, I'm speaking, I'm the expert, and I'm going to tell you things. It's a conference where it's an authentic conversation. And it's women sitting down with women. There's a general guide. 
but they're, they're the experts, not us. And they're sharing their stories, and they're asking their questions. And I, that's my greater vision for what I want women to be able to get out so they can all feel interconnected throughout the world. Very interesting. Why is it important for women to develop a new vision? Well, I think because, um, I don't know if it's a new vision. It's more of an authentic vision. I say new vision, but what I mean is really going deep inside themselves and and asking the question like I did when I realized that I wasn't, I wasn't happy and I was like more of just going through the motions. Mm-hmm. Really coming out of that place of feeling like life is controlling them and, and re- understanding at a deep level that we make all, we are responsible for every choice we make and have made in our lives. And that means stepping out of this victimhood that I think our society has a lot of where it's done to you instead of you taking on and made these choices to get you where you are today. So kind of waking up, bringing those stories to the conscious mind, releasing them if they need to, and then moving into a place of, okay, now that I've learned all of this and understand this, what is my new vision? What do I want to create in my mm-hmm. life? And th- that's why I believe it's really important for women to do that because I think it's more of going through the motions and then waking up and then taking action to move into a new place. How do you get someone to be authentic, though? <laughs> well, you know, I think it's it's a, lar- a long process, and I don't think you ever get there. You know, it's, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Not to destination, and everybody has a different definition of authenticity. Truly, mm-hmm. um, I I am constantly changing my version of what authenticity means to me as I grow and expand. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we're trying to get anybody to be authentic. I think we're asking women to take some personal responsibility in their lives, get congruent with what's going on inside with them and manifesting it on the outside. I think that's what authenticity is about, being congruent. I'd much rather be around a woman that Mm -hmm. I run into during the day and I say, how are you? If they go, I'm wonderful, how are you? That doesn't feel congruent if you can feel that they're struggling or suffering. I'd rather Mm -hmm. be around a woman that's like, having a really rough day, I'll get through it, how are you? That's the difference for me with authenticity. I don't want to get anyone to be authentic. I want to encourage them to figure out what's going on inside themselves and get congruent with it on the outside. Very interesting concept. When do someone know, though, it is time to release the past? Because you're living in it every day, day in, day out. And I guess at what point in your life where you hit that wall and you say, well, enough is enough. We're all going through a process. Life is a journey, like you mentioned. And so as we go through our daily journey, there will come a point in time that these women will realize that, you know, well, enough is enough. It's time to release the past. Is there a formula for that or is there something that you guys have to help them understand if you are at this point in your life, well, it's time to make that decision? That's a good question. Um, I don't have a set formula, but Mm -hmm. I do know that there are specific traits of women that actually share their story with us, Mm -hmm. Um, and the traits aren't physical or age or anything. They are women that are searching, that are empowered into moving into a more peaceful and joyful place in their lives. They're encouraged. So that would be a really good question to ask them, like what motivated Mm -hmm. them. I want to hear from the women in in our community about that to -hmm. find out what does motivate them to move into this space. I know personally for me, it was, like I said before, a place of struggle and hardship, a very intense period in my life around the divorce and my friend's death, and then waking up to a place of, okay, I need to heal for a couple of years and and get some ground under my feet. And then going, you know what? I feel really like I'm finally gotten more congruent. 
how can I move into more of a space of this? How, you get a taste of it. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm not anxious right now. I'm inspired. Just the tiniest little taste. And then you get in touch with your intuition. And you go, wow, I, I'm hearing that I need to do this. I need to follow that. I'm going to surrender and trust and and move, take a, a baby step forward and see what happens. And then you get encouraged and more encouraged and more encouraged. And then you take a giant leap into really surrendering to the divine and letting the divine take the lead, which is your intuition. And that's what happened for me. Very interesting. That's very good. Thanks for sharing that. May I mm-hmm. share something? Sure. I'd love for you to. I view life in the sense that we're governed by two equal but separate forces, mm-hmm. love and fear. In everything that we do, the decisions that we make every day in anything, it's governed by love and fear. When we allow our love to exceed our fear, we will experience harmony. And so if we look at things that we go through life, the day that you are no longer you, when situation forces you to be away from the authentic you, then it's time to make the decision. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe, I completely agree with that. And I believe that that happened to me when I was married with my three children looking around, I don't know if you've ever heard the Talking Heads song, um, where it says, this is not my beautiful wife. This is, I, I woke up and I went, wait a minute, what did I create? I mean, literally, in a day, I realized I had an aha. This mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is not what I intended to create. I mean, not my three beautiful children, but just it was so incongruent with who I wanted to be that it was literally a wake-up call. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you. It does happen that way sometimes. There's a process that goes after that as well. Oh, to definitely. Kind of move into it. Yes. Definitely. The decision process comes in is when you know there are certain things in your life that are authentic. That's the authentic you. And what I would say is the upper and your lower limits. The day or the time, the moment that you realize that you are no longer you, then it's time for change. Right. Beautiful. It is time for change. It's time for change all over the world right now. It's a great <laughs> thing. <laughs> How can someone share their stories? Um, they can just go to our website and click on our share over for and mm-hmm. click on our share uh, tab that has our guidelines for submitting. Um, mm-hmm. We also have um, a new thing that's coming up, which is, well, it's already here. Uh, audio, video, and written uh, share. So you can take a camera, have somebody <laughs> videotape your story and submit mm-hmm. it. We are so excited to get videos of people because I really feel like it's beautiful to watch someone speaking their truth and mm-hmm. you can get a lot more sometimes than just from the written word or even audio taping your story. I think that is wonderful too. And I had uh, our entire team videotape themselves, just sharing a little bit about themselves to introduce themselves so that people feel more comfortable sharing their stories on video um, because it is sometimes intimidating to get on video and speak, but boy, it, it's a beautiful thing to, to learn a lot about yourself since we're so focused on the outside to so just really surrender and speak into a mm-hmm. camera. Mm-hmm. Do you have some success stories you can share with us? Oh, I have a really great one. I think it was probably, there are so many touching stories. This one moved me beyond words. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a woman that submitted her story a a little over a year ago. And she is from this small town in the Middle East. And she wrote all about her life. But uh, the most touching part of it was that she had been physically abused by her husband violently. And what happened was she had oil thrown all over her and was Mm -hmm. burned and lost her voice, literally lost her voice. So she had the trait. Um, And she spoke about how she's not a victim. She's Mm -hmm. a mom. And she makes money by writing and doing arts and crafts. Um, And... We send these tokens, Women for One sends these beautiful truth color tokens with a lotus on one side and our logo on the other 
is similar to um, uh, t- Tibetan prayers because it, we, we attach this little red ribbon to it. You could do anything you want with it. You could, it's a charm. Mm-hmm. And we send them as a thank you and as gratitude to all of our truth tellers. And she received it and wrote me the most beautiful letter saying that every single day, by writing her story and releasing it, that she moved into such a deep place of power and she is so honored to be a woman for one truth teller that she wears the token hanging around her trach tube and that she walks around with pride knowing that she spoke her story even though she can't speak. Mm-hmm. Now that story, if it doesn't move you, I <laughs> I was so deeply touched. And what I realized, because that was a year ago, was, wow, this really isn't about me at all. And I am being a conduit for Women for One. And I don't even know with what I'm doing the breadth of the impact of what we're doing is. Like, it just was humbling in that moment, like, to honor and respect that women are are just craving to tell, they just want to tell their stories so bad, so mm-hmm. badly that that to see that this one woman in the Middle East <laughs> was, was wearing our token on her trait tube, and mm-hmm. she can't even speak her truth literally, but she did speak her truth to women for one. That's, like, that's my favorite story by far. Um, That's fantastic. Isn't it, isn't it fantastic? I mean, it's yeah, yeah. It, it, talk about evoking passion in me to continue on when you hear that. Um, but there's so many stories. I mean, there's there's women that talk openly about their eating disorders and mm-hmm. say, "This is where I was." There's women that talk. There's one woman that submitted a story about her father's suicide and his drug issues and how she was there and. He threatened her. I mean, there's, there's, and but the, but the, the guiding thread through all of them is not just Pollyanna, like I'm okay now. It's that they internalized the hardship into a place to create of power. They like they alchemized that hardship into power inside their body and their soul, and they learned from it, and they became stronger, and did incredible things in the world after to help others. And it's so inspiring with the way the news is these days where we're just highlighting the celebrities or we're highlighting uh, all the struggles and the negativity to hear stories that are really true and authentic about people supporting other people and inspiring others. Very interesting. How can someone join your community and get involved? Well, they can submit a story. That would be the first mm-hmm. thing. Um, they can follow us on social media. We ha- we are in all the Facebook, Twitter, all that right now. They can send us their ideas. I would love to hear their ideas, and I'd love for them to become a truth teller on our site. Um, we also just launched our new uh, contributors page, which I'm actually going to switch it to to being called truth tellers. It feels more congruent with who we are instead of just people that have contributed. But we have the pictures of everyone that's contributed on that page, and you can click on their picture and get to their story. So if you do have someone that you love and adore and follow, they could be on our site, already have contributed. And they can suggest people that they want to hear from. I love interviewing inspiring people all over the Mm -hmm. world. And actually also have um, it in the works with a woman that started a movement in Australia called Mm -hmm. the Positive Women's Movement. We want to do a joint radio show in the future because we want to to connect Australia and America together that way and have women share together. So really that's how um, women can get involved currently. We have all kinds of other ideas in the works for the future, but that's right now what we're doing. Very interesting. What's your website again? Uh, www.womenforone.com You had mentioned a lot of things about women movements all over the world, and I'm just bringing something up here that I thought that, that needs to be addressed, which is quite interesting, and we talk about different geographical area, different parts of the world. Women are struggling or women have a different focus in what they deem to be important. And as you know, the world is currently facing that surge in women movement in so many ways. In the U.S., for the first time, women are leading legislations 
to end lifetime alimony, which I thought was very interesting in several different states. Right. And do you know why they're doing that? Because for the first time, these women are earning more than their male spouses. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's quite interesting on how the table has changed. And, of course, in mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia, women are now allowed to vote. However, they are not allowed to drive, which is sort of interesting. Mm-hmm. Do you see your organization get involved in such hot topics? Well, that's a really interesting question on several, in several ways. Because regarding um, the women leading legislation first, um, you know, I, I think it comes back to women – taking the lead in the way of balancing out the feminine and the masculine, mm-hmm. like I spoke about, where the masculine is just do to do and the feminine is more in touch with the intuition. But I'm not sure, and, you know, you haven't asked me if, what my personal opinion is, but if I personally agree with women pushing so hard to assimilate into a the, the masculine society that way, um, where women are earning as much or more, because I feel like, the way women have been successful the past 30 to 40 years, and I've heard this from several people I've interviewed, and I actually really agree with this. Sheila Kelly is one of them, and Dr. Northup was the other that talked about this. Most of the successful women in our society, I believe, in the last 40 to 50 years have become masculine and moved into their masculine energy to become successful out of pure survival. And I feel like the the shift really is about women moving into their feminine power, mm-hmm. not their masculine mm-hmm. power. So, yeah. so, for example, I mean, I love Hillary Clinton, but Hillary Clinton has become masculine, mm-hmm. and and she's become successful because that's the way we succeed financially, yeah. politically, you know, professionally in our lives. So I believe the deep shift that's happening is women are moving into their feminine power, which is the intuition the having people come to them instead of that push energy of masculine. So mm-hmm. we're kind of getting off subject, but coming back to, you know, where women are pushing for this, I mean, it's wonderful that women, it, there are women that are suggesting this, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take a stand on any cause because the intent of women, for one, is to share information. I don't mm-hmm. believe that we need to carry flags for any big causes other mm-hmm. than, Oppression, violent oppression for women, because I am you know, very much against any kind of violence mm-hmm. against women and oppression. Um, so I, I do wanted to I wanted to speak about this. Uh, Gary Zukov wrote something called "Pulling the Root of Violence," and he he wrote it not even after I think it was after Newtown, mm-hmm. uh, or maybe it was before that. Um, but he talked about each of us inside ourselves. That's where the violence starts, and Mm -hmm. that's where oppression starts. And my focus and intent with Women for One is to have people individually shift inside themselves, not the focus isn't these grand movements that I'm going to get involved with, and I'm not Mm -hmm. going to carry a flag for any of them. I'm going to highlight individual people to take a look and wake up themselves because I completely align with Gary's belief systems around that. You have to change yourself. You have to look at how you're violent, how you're angry with yourself before you move into doing a movement and changing the world in this push energy. It's obvious Mm -hmm. it starts with oneself first, and then from that to a group, to a community, to a state, to a nation. Yeah. Right. But I do find that a lot of organizations Mm -hmm. are coming from the place of having a very strong agenda of mm-hmm. that this world is broken, that mm-hmm. that the world is broken and it needs to be fixed. And yeah. as long as we come from that mindset, I don't believe anything's going to shift. As long, you know, and it's not about like I said before, being a Pollyanna and everything is perfect and beautiful. But it yeah. is about that we are all one, and we are all interconnected. And how about we take some personal responsibility and look at ourselves first? and then move into garnering a community of support into shifting into a different place. Very true. 
I think most of the things that is happening now with regards to like you were talking about giving examples of like say Hillary Clinton and so forth, I think eventually that will take care of itself simply because of generations. Because right. during her generation, that's what is needed to succeed. Whereas mm -hmm. the newer generations, that has changed. I completely agree. I think you know, it will take many, many years to shift into mm -hmm. that. And she was, right. she is a trailblazer for all yeah. women, like right. Oprah is. And even Oprah, I would say, yeah. has gone into her masculine doing because she mm -hmm. had to. But right. I also think she does represent, as she's moved away from one of her shows into mm -hmm. what she's doing now into the own network, um, she's moving into that place of feminine power, allowing right. things to come to her really moving into an example for all of us as a mm -hmm. strong, feminine woman. Right. Mm -hmm. By the way, we're coming close to the end of the hour. Okay. Since our show is about people, family, and living life, would you like to share a recipe for living with our listeners this morning? I would love to. And I haven't listened to anybody else's recipe for living, but I mm -hmm. have four words that came to me. Okay. when I heard Recipe for Living. And that would be presence, gratitude, truth, and service. And I can speak to each of them for one minute. Sure. Um, I would say presence is really, when you're feeling like you're you're not here, you're not of any service to yourself or anybody else. So truly being present in the moment, stopping. Like, literally, I tell myself, stop. You're, you know, I've got six children. You're running around crazy. <laughs> Stop. Be present. Where are you? Literally physically looking around the room and saying out loud what's in front of me to get me where I am in the moment instead of living in the future or the past. Second, gratitude, which I probably think it, it, it is the most important to me. And as I've moved in through my life, the more gratitude I have, the more joy and, pe joy and peace I have. It's just mm -hmm. so aligned with joy and peace. I mean, every day I have a gratitude jar in our house. Every day I stop, I look around, and it feels like a gift when I'm present and I can be grateful. It feels like, a, like I'm giving a little massage to myself or a gift. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Um, truth mm -hmm. is really what Where for One is all about, and that is being authentic, searching for that authenticity inside yourself, speaking your truth when it's not the most popular thing with your friends or your family, but really mm -hmm. speaking from that place of truth. Mm -hmm. And then I think we are all put on this planet to do service. Service meaning anything that will uplift or inspire others or anything. I mean, daily, just stopping and letting somebody in in traffic <laughs> or helping mm -hmm. someone that's struggling in any way possible. Service allows us to move into gratitude, which I think is so important, um, because we're grateful that we actually have this body that we can give in service to the world. So that's my recipe for truth, for uh, living. That's fantastic. Kelly, thank you for the great recipe for living and for spending this hour with me on From My Mama's Kitchen Talk Radio. To all our listeners, thank you for being with us. Please join me next Tuesday morning. My guest will be Susan Heim. She is the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, Inspiration for Writers. The book contains 101 stories from people who have successfully chased their dream of writing, documenting their setbacks and successes, and sharing their tips for finding inspiration. Susan will be sharing stories from the book to help inspire you. For additional information about this show and future shows, please go to FromMyMama'sKitchen.com. Thank you for listening. Have a blessed week. Kelly, thank you again and have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.